join me on this roof from a bird's eye view from our drone footage. Today we're looking at the installation of plywood or OSB decking over some plank boards that had significant gaps. The prior roof, we removed the prior shingles and there was one layer of composition shingles and then underneath of that there was a layer of wood shakes. What was discovered underneath of that before we started the project was the wood planks on this roof that had significant gaps and it did not have a nailable base so we're installing a nailable base. Today we're going to look at the same process multiple times so you get a firm understanding of what's taking place and I'll repeat the same thing several times so you understand what we're doing and how to do it especially if you're a homeowner and you're installing some wood deck, uh, some OSB board over your wood planks yourself, you'll get a really good idea of how to make this happen. So let's take a look together here. And uh, right now, as you can see, the man in the middle is installing nails in the OSB board. And then the other gentleman to the left in the green shirt is actually putting some H clips on. And the H clips are needed to provide gaps in between the plywood. Either you can use the H clips or you can put some nails there, but we're looking at approximately an eighth inch gap between each sheet is needed to avoid issues with expansion and contraction. Plywood <clears throat> and any wood will absorb moisture out of the atmosphere, and as it does, it will expand, and then as it expands, it can buckle. We don't want that to happen. You can see our guys moving and pushing and even they'll kick here in a little bit to shift the OSB board tightly up against those H clips. And again, we have approximately a close to an eighth inch gap with those H clips in place, which is plenty of, of, uh, of a space and which is necessary to avoid buckling in many environments, especially environments that have a higher humidity. Here in Colorado, our humidity is not that high, but you can still see outlines of patterns of four by eight sheets of decking on roofs where, where they did not properly space the decking. And you can actually see it telegraphing through the shingles. And anytime you see that, almost every time, the reason why that's occurring is because they didn't properly space the decking during installation. Here we go, we're shifting the plywood or OSB over as needed. The other gentleman's nailing there in the blue shirt in the center. And uh, uh, we are we almost have this slope on the backside all completed. As you can see, we've roof loaded materials up here. And when you roof load the materials in advance, you shift the materials around as needed. Uh, the crew likes that. My preference, actually, as a roofer, is to leave the materials on the ground to carry them up on a ladder after all of the decking is installed. That is a personal preference. And right here, we're cutting the OSB board that's extended past the rake edge, and the gentleman is holding onto the edge of the plywood. You got to make sure you don't overextend yourself and make sure it's not too heavy and you've got to balance your weight properly so you don't have an issue but with years of experience this is a crew foreman here not an issue but you don't want to let that plywood fall if you're going to cut it in place uh, I would a lot of times personally that when I was installing the roof I would cut the plywood first and then install the sheet I did not or rarely did I install or cut the plywood on the gable edge in. Most of the time it was already cut to fit based upon measurements. He's got a helper helping him on that piece so it doesn't fall down and hit the edge of the home. That's the way you want to do it to make sure you don't create any damage. Here in this lower section, you can see us installing nails to the 4x8 sheet of OSB. And uh, that's... Uh, important to make sure that you're installing the right number of nails. 
it can be different from county to county and it could be different based upon where you are. I think Miami-Dade County in Florida may have some of the most restrictive installation procedures that there are, which is a very good thing. They're concerned with the plywood, about the integrity of the home during a hurricane, very large wind events for prolonged periods of time. So their nail pa nailing patterns will be different than ours. Gentlemen, just cut the plywood on the roof. And when you're cutting that, make sure you set the depth of the shingle blade, forgive me, the depth of your saw blade uh, to the right depth. You want to just go about a 16th or an eighth of an inch, about an eighth of an inch extra. So if you're OSB 7 16th, you would want to go ahead and set your blade depth at 9 16 of an inch when you're cutting like that on the roof. Here we go, setting another sheet right here near the peak. And uh, he's got some H clips either in place or, yep, yeah, the H clips are already in place. And sometimes you have to wedge those open a little bit in order to get those in there when you're sliding them from top down. Just depends on the angle. Uh, we had some, looks like some two by two drip edge in the way. Uh, he'll address that in a little bit. That's got to be removed right now. He's going to pop a chalk line so he can cut that overhanging piece of OSB and get that properly installed. Now, when you're installing the uh, the decking here in you know, it depends on where you are. You're putting nails every eight inches in some cases on the very ends of the 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 four by eight sheets. It depends again what county you're in, but every eight inches putting nails in on the edge, and then in the center you're putting nails five nails per uh, per row there. And so you want to do that many times. That when we're installing the nails. We would rather, I mean, it's not going to hurt us to install instead of five nails. If we install seven nails on that rafter, we're perfectly fine with seven nails or eight nails on the rafter. If we're installing more than what's required, we don't have a problem with that. The problem, though, is if you end up installing 15 nails or so in a four-foot length, then what you may end up doing is having an issue with splitting that rafter. Nevertheless, make sure you're installing plenty of nails per code. Right up at the top, we just cut the uh, the plywood at the top, removing that. And as you can see, we're making an area, that, a void there for the ridge vent that we're going to be installing on this roof. That's why we have a substantial gap at the top of the peak. A ridge vent is going in up there. All right, let's see what's going on next here. We're cutting some overlapping pieces of decking at the, the peak. We've got some men further down that are doing different things on the roof. Here in a moment, you can see that we've got multiple things happening all at once. Plywood being installed, the synthetic underlayment already installed in many areas, ice and water shield installed on the eaves for the snow load, gentlemen on the roof right now blowing off the dust, making sure that we have good traction and cleaning off the roof before they start installing the shingles. They will be installing the drip edge, gutter apron, and installing the starter shingles shortly, all at the same time. It looks like with this is a six-man crew or so on this particular day. That changes day by day depending upon the job. Here we go and roll in the underlayment while we're while we're capping off the roof with a final <clears throat> installation of the OSB. Getting to the end of this on the OSB installation, we will finish that here shortly. <clears throat> Make sure, again, you nail those well. Make sure that you, on your OSB, that you install spacers. You can use H-clips, you can use nails, or some other ingenious way to for the gaps on the roof. Uh, that's just very important to do. Make sure that on the gaps on the the plywood when you install it that you have it that you have room for that to breathe. We don't want to do not want that buckling. 
Well, <clears throat> you see us here, I mean, different places, cutting again. And you can see how we handle the materials. Be careful with your extension cord while cutting. Make sure you don't cut through the extension cord. On some of the parts of the decking, of the installation of it, it's good to work in pairs. Other times you may need more than pairs. The gentleman over there in the green shirt's installing, getting ready to install the attic air vent uh, back on that roof. So a lot taking place all at one time. The gentleman on the orange shirt in the front getting ready to install the drip edge. We have one last small piece to install up here at the peak. And that's all we have after that. This roof will be completely installed. It, everything will be finished in just a moment. These men are finalizing details on the attic ventilation. That's a power vent that they're getting ready to reset right here. Gentleman in the orange shirt getting ready to install the gutter apron in just a moment. He's one of the uh, one of the lead roofers giving the other men in the other shirts a little bit uh, information there on the install. Now, here we go, installing the, uh, getting the last piece ready to install. That piece was just cut, putting that in place, getting ready to nail it. Then he'll pop a chalk line here in a moment to make his final cut. Spreading that H clip there, as you saw just a second ago, the H clip to fit that in. That piece is fitted into place. The other men are nailing plastic caps into the synthetic underlayment right there. The men on the right side, they're finalizing the synthetic underlayment, the installation of that. And by the time we finish installing the decking, these men will have the synthetic underlayment to, as you can see, the same place right at the peak. So very well, uh, uh, very good team working tightly together, been working together for a long time able to get this done proficiently, effectively, able to get it done quickly and safely. Uh, we're able to uh, work together as a team, everybody doing their part to get the roof installed and uh, making sure that no one's, no one is, uh, uh, has nothing to do at any point. Everybody has something to do at every point on this roof install. And so we're finished with installing the decking. Again, we're going out looking at the ridge vent void for where the uh, ridge vent goes, or the ridge void where the ridge vent goes, flying over that right now. Finalizing the install of the synthetic underlayment. Here you go, guys. That's how we do it. Good luck with your installation of OSB board or plywood uh, decking over your over your space planking. Good luck. Hey guys, I almost forgot to show you a close-up of the H-clip installed with the OSB board. You want to put the H-clips on near your edges, on your horizontal and vertical edges on the corners. And so that will give you that gap as needed so you don't have any issues with the expansion of the OSB due to the heavy moisture content. Heavy moisture Content will occur no matter where you are at some point, even here in Colorado, with low humidity. It, it, the installs are impacted if you do not use ex, any form of expansion gaps. And so you need to use those either with age clips or with nails to separate the joints. Install the roof sheathing, your OSB decking with eight penny or eight D nails, it's the same thing. And again, make sure you follow the instructions, your building code requirements for the area on spacing and the number of nails. Always use a framing nail gun for the installation of the nails for the rafter members in the for the your decking.